We begin tonight in Ontario, where one health region is taking new measures to curb an alarming rise in COVID-19 cases. Starting tomorrow, schools in Peel will close for at least 14 days and move to remote learning. The region's top doctor says this closure is a necessary step to protect staff and students in Peel region. With increasing case counts and the presence of variants of concern, we need to break chains of transmission and keep our schools safe. But Ontario's other hot zone, Toronto, has not ordered schools to close despite growing calls to do so. And today the chief medical officers for Toronto, Peel and Ottawa issued a joint letter calling on the province to issue stay-at-home orders. In Ontario and across much of the country, a younger demographic is getting sick, really sick. Abigail Beeman talks to the frontline workers who are witnessing it. It's heart-wrenching. It's heart-wrenching as a mother. Matthew Cardinal's mom says he was totally healthy before he got the UK variant. After two weeks in the ICU, she's thrilled to report her son is off the ventilator, eating solid foods, and now able to move from his bed to a chair. He's 34. My family, talk about a, a scary, terrifying experience. I don't, know, I don't wish this upon anybody. I just want people to... to, to take any necessary precautions. It's quite disturbing of a pattern to see, uh, you know, people in their 20s and 30s uh, on life support uh, and breathing tube in their throat, uh, keeping them alive. This is not something that we are used to seeing or we should expect to see uh, in a country like ours. Cardinal is one of 44 people with COVID-19 in a Saskatchewan ICU. Nearly 30 are in Regina. Further east, Ontario fares the worst, reporting around 3,000 new cases each day for the past four days. Currently, nearly 500 people are in an ICU with a COVID-related illness. And over the past two weeks, 210 Ontarians hospitalized with the virus were younger than 50. The hallmark of this variant is that it's much more infectious. Um, and it's much more likely to cause serious illness when someone becomes infected with it. Dr. Callie Barrett is one of many calling for better protections, including vaccination for essential workers, and points out if younger people survive the ICU, there's often long-standing physical trauma from the medical care required. The essential workers that are keeping our cities running um, are unfortunately now dying as a consequence of COVID-19, but also if they're surviving, are, are being maimed. As for Matthew Cardinal, his mom can't wait to hug him and wants to see him walk again. I could see the progress right now, but tomorrow, uh, I, I have no idea. It's one, one day at a time right now, and I'm, hope, I'm hoping for the best. Hoping for the best, alongside more families worried about younger loved ones in hospital. Abigail Beeman, Global News, Ottawa.